All right, we are here in the Vibrant Performance booth with Rich, and uh, as I've been calling it, the Tel the Tel yeah, the, <laughs> the Tesla with an LS. Uh, this thing is insane, man. Thank you, man. Uh, Thank you, you know, the, the whole running joke is LS the world, and, and right. Uh, you know, Elon Musk is famous for saying to the moon. Well, you took one of his cars and took it to the starting line because yeah. this, this is crazy. What is Thank going you. on here? Thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. So, uh, so pretty much a long time ago, uh, this car was in a Texas flood. It was uh, underwater, submerged up to the half up to the door line, and everything got destroyed. Like the motors were destroyed, the battery was done. So what I did was I stripped everything and I started the process of, hey, I'm gonna buy another Tesla motor and Tesla battery. But I already did that once before, and it actually gets kind of boring. It's like you know, hey, look, another Tesla on the road. What's one thing that we can do to set it apart from every other Tesla on the road? And the most significant thing, I'm gonna lessen it. Right on. So, wh which LS is this? This is an LS3 out of a Camaro SS. Cool. Yeah. So, what? How do you even get started on putting an LS in a car that used to be an electric? You know, it's cr a lot of time, a lot of alcohol, and a lot of <laughs> money. Uh, so, basically, it, surprisingly enough, first thing I want to say is this is an entire V8 engine, and look how much clearance there is. There's actually a lot of room in here. So surprisingly, you know, it's almost like Tesla said to themselves, you know what, let's make enough room for an LS just in case. <laughs> but if you look, there's at least like another like foot and a half before you got to the front crash bar. But what we had to do is this, the, uh, the, the floor of the Tesla is completely flat, which is rare because 99% of cars nowadays, it has like a transmission tunnel. You know what I mean? Like right. usually if it's rear wheel drive, it'll be a, a tunnel in the middle and it'll go all the way to the back. Because this car didn't have that, we, had our, uh, we have our lead fabricator here, Joshua. He actually, we got the shell, he cut the car in half down the middle and actually formed a transmission tunnel and looped both sides together to accommodate the engine and transmission in this. Cool. So, so after you do the transmission tunnel, what do you do for a rear end? Because originally this car doesn't have you know a typical transaxle like everybody nope. else would. So, uh, so again, with the fabrication, uh, what we were able to do was we had the, uh, the stock uh, rear end of the Tesla. We actually retrofitted the, uh, the stock pumpkin, the rear diff, out of a Camaro SS to fit in that subframe as well. Did it have to be narrowed down to fit or was it right width already? Nope, right width. It fit right in there because the Tesla stock motor is so wide and heavy. Literally, the, uh, the compared to the diff, compared to the rear motor, it's like the size of a pumpkin, pretty much. It's heavy, uh, yeah. but it's very small and compact and it fit right in the center of the uh, that rear end unit. Okay, so uh, if you happen to see the stance of it, obviously it's on air suspension. It's on air suspension, so yes. What, with changing the rear suspension, what had to be done to make the air suspension work? It's pretty simple. It's pretty much a stock. Um, it's uh, uh, it's from the stock coils uh, going to air. Pretty simple process. Nothing had to be changed in the rear. No tubbing, no modification in the rear end whatsoever. Teslas could actually sit pretty low by themselves. So these are 20s. They sit pretty low in the fender. Uh, Tesla comes stock. Well, the performance Teslas come stock with 21s, and they'll fit right in there. So no rear end modifications had to be done. Uh, to accommodate the air suspension. Wow, that worked yeah. out to your favor. Worked out pretty well, yeah. So the next question is, is again, it's electric. There's no fuel cell. There's no fuel, no. any kind of system. That what had to be done to make a fuel system work? Uh, very good question. So a couple things. Well, first, we have to worry about air. Air is our biggest thing because, remember, there's no front grill on a Tesla. Ah. So how do you get airflow into there? Well, a couple things we thought of was uh, if you look at this mesh right here, this is the OEM Tesla front bumper. There's actually a lot of air able to be, to be uh, traveled in here. There's two uh, individual spots where they could come in. And then right here, we added new channels as well to bring more airflow. We have a ram air intake. The filter's literally right here. So as you're driving, it's sucking cool air in it all the time. So for the fuel system, uh, the interesting part of that is that we, we have a fuel cell that we installed. We have dash eight lines going all the way from the rear, going to the front, and a return system as well. And uh, this is the fuel cell. Uh, it's a 14-gallon fuel cell, uh, and there are four pumps, three fuel pumps, and one lift pump, and that'll give it all the fuel it needs to uh, to survive. So that's a stock engine right now, and the plan is in the future to go a built motor with a supercharger. Oh, with all that room, you might as well do a V10. Just yeah, go I, ahead. That was originally the goal to do a V10, but like you know, V10 Viper motors—they're big, they're heavy, and then yeah. performance parts are kind of scarce for them. Uh, so that's a fuel cell, 14-gallon again, and this is how it's filled up right here. So we have a gas cap. It's out of a. It's a marine gas cap. Yeah. And uh, we have that there. And now, is that where the original charging port is? That's where the original charge port is. The Tesla. Oh, that yeah. worked out beautifully. It worked out really well. And on the other side, uh, again, this is the uh, fuel cell here, uh, the battery, and the uh, the fuse blocks and relay blocks that we have. 
to control all the, um, the the fuel system. So even with all this added, you still got plenty of room for groceries and there's, everything. There's tons of room in here. Surprisingly, yeah. I mean, this 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 fold down visor right here that's easy to come out. You can still fold the seats down. You can use it like a regular car. It's super easy to use. Drive and, drive like drivability wise. How does it add? Well, you know what? We it was so down to the last minute. We literally finished this car before we drove it into the show. Oh so yeah. This car, in terms of mileage under its own power, it probably has maybe half a mile on it. Wow. So we drove it off the trailer, tuned it, and drove it right into the show pretty much. Oh, so you're, you're pretty excited for the show to be over. I'm pretty excited <laughs> to actually drive it out of here and show the world. And then on this side, again, this is the uh, battery cutoff switch. So how much of the, oper the Tesla operating system is still there? Does the screen and everything still work? Everything still works. So we have, so, you know, we, we have a great crew. Uh, we have a fabricator and we have uh, two of our former Tesla techs. You know, we have a, a shop that we run. And uh, we made sure that everything works in the car. The navigation screen works, Bluetooth works, steering wheel controls work, everything works in the car. The speedometer works. The only thing that doesn't work is the tire pressure monitoring system. For some of that damn light, you can't get that <laughs> off for some reason. But I think that's most cars anyways. But everything does work. It's, it, the car is just, it's very well integrated. Uh, and on the inside, I haven't seen the inside yet, there's actually a, a sequential shifter on the inside too. So if you look right here, it's still a six-speed manual with sequential shifting. Okay. Yep. Wow. And that's the standalone unit. The small computer on the bottom is the standalone. And that's the main Tesla screen. That still works. The instrument cluster still works. And if you look at that really small dial, that little small um, black circle, that controls the air suspension. And you probably can't see it in the vent. You might have to go on the other side. But uh, it'll show you that that's the gear indicator. Because it's sequential, there's no typical, you know, up to the left down to the left and then up over to the right to switch gears it just taps back and forth so you can't really tell what gear you're in okay so inside the hvac vent i put a little pod in there to show you one two three four five six in neutral so you can actually see what gear you're in as opposed to trying to feel for it which you can't with the sequential right on um before we wrap up are there is there any uh sponsors you would like to plug or anyone that had their hands on it you'd like to plug oh man there's a lot of people so uh our, our main lead fabricator joshua He's been awesome. He's over there texting on his flip phone. He used to actually build NASCAR, so he's a great guy. Uh, we have Chad uh, from our, our shop. He did a lot of the electronics and wiring. And then everyone else here, you know, eBay Motors, uh, Weld Racing Wheels. Uh, we're in Vibrant Performance Booth. They did a lot of the uh, connectors for, uh, for the fuel system. Uh, a and Custom Wraps, IAA, the salvage car, the site that I got it from. Toyo Tires, S1 Sequential. I mean, Radium, the fuel cell company, Haltech. There's a lot of people that to come together to do this, but they're all off the side of the car, and it, without them, it wouldn't be possible. Well, very cool. Uh, is there any way to find you on social media if anyone wants to see the build process? Yeah, sure. Or, or are you getting out driving it at the end of this week? Hopefully, yeah. They could follow me uh, on Instagram, at Richie B. Kid with two Ds, uh, or on YouTube, uh, Rich Rebuilds is the YouTube channel name. Well, very cool. Well, Rich, thank, thank you, you very much for your time, thank buddy. You, Bobby, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Have a great weekend. Thank you, man.